Hi, in this video, we will enter into 3D uh, structures. But before we go to the full 3D frame, in this video, I will explain how to model a 3D truss. So the example we have for this video is this one over here, which is a simple uh, space truss. And we can see here that it has rollers on points A, B, and C, and it has only one point load at point uh, at node D, acting uh, vertically downward. And it wants us to determine the reaction forces and the internal forces on, this, on the truss members. So going back to SAP, we can come here to the new model. We're going to use the grid only, but there's also a template for 3D trusses over here. Uh, a little bit complicated to use, but if you want to try it, that's it. But in this video, we will go into the grid only. Let's change the units to kilonews and meters and click the grid only. So in here, we have X, Y, and Z direction of number of lines and the spacing. So let's go back to our problem. And let's do our problem in the same coordinate system as the, the problem here. So in our X direction, we will have three grid lines spaced three meters. So in our X direction, we will have three spaced three meters. In our Y direction, we will have two spaced two and two and a half. No, I mean, we have three again. And because we can't have different spacing, let's say two, and then we, we will change that after. In the Z direction, we only have two grid lines spaced six meters. So two spaced six meters. And OK. And here we can see the 3D view of our grid, which uh, still doesn't look like the problem we have, but we, it will shortly. But before we do anything, let's change our grid in the Y direction because we couldn't model two and two and a half. We only had two and two, so now our problem is wrong. Let's uh, double click on the grid, come to the Y, and now we want the first one to be two and the second one to be two and a half. So the first one is two, and this, instead of four, we can change it to four and a half. Click OK. Now it slightly changed, but it did. All right, so now that we have our um, grid correct, let's create the material and the cross section. So in our problem, uh, right over here, we have that the material has an elastic modulus of 200, 200 GPA, and the area of each element on this space truss is six millimeters square. So let's go back to SAP, come to define materials. Um, this is the steel material. Let's modify it. Call it steel material. And the only thing we need to change is the modulus of elasticity. Let's go back to Newton millimeters and put 200,000. All right, let's click OK. All right, so now let's create our section. Come here to frame sections, add a new section, come to uh, other and then section designer. Let's create this section example. Change the base material to steel material. And create a rectangle, which is the easiest one. Let's change this to millimeters. Right click on the rectangle, change the material to steel. And to get a 6,000 millimeter square area, we need a height and width of 77.46 millimeters. Click OK. Let's zoom in, check the properties, and we see that the area is uh, close enough. So let's click Done, OK here, and OK. Let's take the opportunity to save the problem. And uh, let's save in desktop. Okay. Simple. And now we can start drawing our element. OK, so let's go back to the problem. And let's first draw the elements on the base. And here you can see that we have an element that comes from the origin to 6 meters on the x axis. And then we have this element, which is in between. 
and also this element connecting. So let's go back to SAP. In here, I have the XY plane view, which is the plane you want to draw. But if you look here at the 3D view, when I put my mouse over the, the grid on the XY view, you see a blue uh, square on the 3D view, meaning that this plane is actually the top plane and not the bottom plane. So we can come here to this arrow, which is move down and list, and you will see on the 3D view that the blue box will go down, which is the plane we want to draw. Okay, so let's start drawing our elements. Uh, let's, the section example is already select, selected. And here, let's change from continuous to pin because this is a truss. And we can start drawing here. So in our problem, we have the first element going six meters on the X axis. So let's start here on the X axis, three meters, six meters. Now the second element comes from this point to uh, five, four and a half meters in the Y direct Y axis and three meters on the x-axis, which is uh, this point over here. And then the last element just connects to the origin. Let's close this, press ESC. So here we have the base of our 3D truss already modeled. So the only thing we need to model now is the elements that connect each node of the base to one node of the top. So to model these elements, I'm gonna come here again, select the same pin, and instead of using the XY plane, because we will have to draw elements in one plane, the, the starting point in one plane and the end point in another plane, we can't use uh, this view over here. So let's draw in the 3D view. So all these uh, nodes on the base will connect to this node on the top, right here. So we can come here, select the, the section correct, moment release the spin, click here on the first and connect. We can already connect over here and then press ESC and select again the tool and start from here to here. All right, so now we have our 3D truss exactly how it is modeled on the problem. So before we assign our boundary conditions and our load conditions in this problem, let's check if SEP2000 actually, actually created pinned elements and uh, included hinges on the ends and starts of each element so it doesn't transfer moments. So let's select all the elements, come to assign frame uh, releases and partial fixity. And here we can see that SEP2000 didn't include any uh, release on this element. Sometimes for some reason SAP2000, even though when you create the element using this tool over here and select pinned, it doesn't create the hint, the, the releases on the start and the end of each uh, element. So if you come to this screen and these two uh, boxes are selected, you don't need to do anything, just click OK. But if it doesn't, just click uh, on both of these check boxes, check boxes and you will should see this um, green circle on the start and the end of each element. That, that way you know that it has successful, successfully released the moments on each part of the elements. All right, so now we can go ahead and select our, create our boundary conditions. So let's go back to our problem. And as the problem stated, the points A, B, and C over here are rollers. So in here on the left hand side, we still have the X, Y plane, which is the base of this, uh, of this truss selected. So all the, all the nodes on this plane are supports. So let's select uh, all the nodes. We can select everything. And then when we come to assign, we only uh, assign to the joints, not to the frame elements. So we come to the joint and we can see the 3D view there that we have only the base selected and we come to restraints and we want a roller. So being the Z, the, the vertical direction, we only want to have the restraint in the Z direction, which is the tree direction. So we can unselect all the others. And now we have, uh, see on the 3D view that we have rollers in both X and Y direction. All right. Now the only thing we need to assign is the load on the last 
uh, node here on the Z direction. So before that, let's define a load case, a load pattern better, and then create a live. Add a new load pattern, okay. And we can come here to select the node in the 3D view over here. Oops, not this. Let's do this. Okay, now the node is selected. You can see by this uh, blue X, and then we come to assign and joint loads and forces. So we want to uh, put it on the live load, not on the dead load pattern. And it's gonna be on the global Z, which is the vertical direction pointing down. So it's gonna be negative eight kilonewtons, which is the units we have over here. So click OK. We have eight kilonewtons. The boundary conditions are fine. So let's save our problem once again. Let's come to the analyze and set the options. And here we have the space trust uh, template, which we can click and see which degrees of freedom it will get rid of. So because trusses don't have a moment in their elements, it got rid of all the rotations of the elements and only kept the translation degrees of freedom in all directions because this is a 3D element. So let's click OK, click on Run Analysis. Let's get rid of the modal and we don't also don't want to run the dead load. We can press the run now, and now we can check the results. So to see the deflected shape, we can click here on the 3D on the 3D view and come to the deflected shape tool over here and select the live load. And here we can see this is the deflected shape. One thing we can do is click here again, and we can select this option wire shadow to see where the original element undisplaced structure were before the loading. So here we can see where the original element, the original structure was before the loading application and the deform shape. So going back to our problem, we want to get the reaction forces on each roller and the internal forces on all six members. So to get the reaction forces, we can do it in two ways. First, we can select the 3D view and come to show forces, stresses, select the joints, the live load. And we can see here on the deformed shape, the reactions, the vertical reactions on each node. But also like I was uh, doing in the previous videos, we can come to display, show tables. And here in the analysis results, we can select the joint outputs and the reactions. Come on. And here we will have the same results that we have on the displaced element. And if you want to see uh, which joint is number one, two, and three, you can come here to the set display options and label the joints. Now we can see that one, two, and three, and four over here. So the last thing that this problem requires is internal forces on all six trusses members. So in this case, the also have two options. You can come to show forces, trusses, instead of joints, now the frames. And here, because we know trusses only have axial force, we, can, we select the axial component, click OK. Oops, and we can come back and select the show values on diagram over here so we can see the values instead of just the drawing. And we can see here the axial force on each element in kilonewtons. Okay, so if you want to check, come to show tables. And now we don't want the joint output, we want the element, frame output, and then element forces, frames. And here we can see, uh, Again, the same discussion I had on the first or second video about the stations on uh, each element. Well, we have the values on each element over here. So element 1, 1, which is this one, has this amount of axial force. Element 2, 1, uh, which is this one on the back. Element 3, 1, which is this. 4, 1 which is this one, we can't much see it, but we can see the minus 
2.59 over here so it matches the 5 1 which is this again 2.59 and the 6 1 3.85 so the table matches the 3d view which is good so this is uh, a short video how to model a 3d truss and in the next video we will model a 3d frame i hope this video helps you and uh thank you